Hey guys, Kenneth here and welcome to my movie corner and today I am here to review Netflix's newest, I guess, biopic, Blonde. Yes, this movie is written and directed by Andrew Dominic and it stars Ana de Armas, Bobby Cannavale, and Adrian Brody and this movie is the first NC-17 rated movie that I review even though I do own an NC-17 rated film on Blu-ray, that is Blue is the Warmest Color. Um, if you've seen this movie, you know that, yes, it earned the NC-17 rating. But I've never reviewed an NC-17 movie. I reviewed a lot of rated R movies, but never an NC-17 movie. So I was like, okay, that, that would be a cool idea. But to be honest, I was kind of apprehensive when it comes to Blonde because... I don't know, from what I've heard about this movie, it just sounded a lot like exploitation. And I was like, I don't know if I want to see this. And I was planning to skip this movie until I stupidly decided to put, to make a poll on Instagram saying, do you want me to review Blonde? Some of them voted no, but the majority of the people who voted in that poll wanted me to review Blonde. So, yeah. Here I dance for you. Uh, okay. Let me rephrase. Let me... I know you saw that warning at the beginning of the video, but I want to repeat it again. If you are squeamish at the topics of sexual assault, Please do not watch this video because I will get a bit into those parts. I won't be too graphic, I promise. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about what happens. I will pretty much give you an idea as to what's going on. But I'm just saying, if you are sensitive to themes that are about rape or, you know, all that disgusting stuff, please... Don't watch this video. Um, I'll have other videos you can watch. Probably by Friday I will review Hocus Pocus 2 and The Greatest Beer Run Ever. So if you're squeamish to those topics, skip this video. See you on Friday. Now, for the, for the people that don't care about those subjects, blonde. Now that I've seen it, what do I think? Fuck this movie. Seriously, like... Remember when I said in the last review that I, that I said that I would enjoy the monsters more than Blonde? I was right. That movie was garbage, but, you know, I enjoyed it more than Blonde. And, yeah, this, this movie is just horrendous. I really hated this movie for the re for reasons I will get to later, but yeah, like this this is just like I am beyond words as to how much I hated this movie. Like I don't remember being this angry and bored at a movie since music Like, damn. And, and I thought movies like the 355 were bad. Like, this is just on a different level. But to start with the positives, there are some positives. And I will say that the biggest positive in this movie is the thing everyone is praising. Ana de Armas as Marilyn Monroe. Now, I like Ana de Armas. She's a good actress. I liked her in Blade Runner 2049, and I thought she was decent in The Gray Man. And yes, she is one of the most beautiful actresses alive. Like, God, she is just... Her beauty is just, like, out of this world. Like, seriously, she... You could pretty much swear that she was an angel because how beautiful she is. So it would make sense to have one of the most beautiful actresses off right now playing one of the most beautiful actresses uh, ever and yeah 
Ana de Armas in this movie shows that she's more than just a pretty face. She can actually act. Because when I was watching this movie, I forgot this was play she was played by Ana de Armas. I the only thing I saw in the movie was Marilyn Monroe. I didn't see Ana de Armas because she was so into the role. It kind of reminded me of Austin Butler in Elvis because when I saw Elvis, I didn't see Austin Butler. I saw Elvis Presley because he was so deep into the role that he disappeared in it. That is the same with Ana de Armas. She, you don't see Ana de Armas. You see Marilyn Monroe in how she acts, how she looks, and yeah. I could definitely see a Best Actress nomination for Ana de Armas, even though I didn't like this movie. I will say that if this performance wasn't a better movie, I would have loved it because this might be one of my favorite performances of the year. Yes, let's address the elephant in the room. Ana de Armas is Cuban. Yes, there are some times where the Cuban accent does show, but after like 30 minutes, you get used to it. But yeah, Ana de Armas, like, I just like her as an actress. And again, she does seem like a sweet girl. But yeah, I think she is worth commending. She was legitimately pretty good as Marilyn Monroe. The other positive is the movie looks really good. I did like the aesthetic, how they try to make this movie more like a movie that was made in like the 50s or something like this this most of the movie is in the 4-3 aspect ratio and it's in black and white and even the scenes that are in color even though this movie was shot digitally the movie has a film-like appearance when you watch the movie you would literally think that this was shot on film there's even a lot of film grain in the movie and which is not to be expected when a movie is shot digitally but yeah, like if I if I showed you the scene of the movie and I asked you, was this movie shot on film or digital? You would think that this was shot on film because of the aesthetic, and I think it matched because it gave it gave the movie this old movie feel, and I thought it was a pretty good choice. And that's about it. Now, let's get to the negatives and this movie just doesn't feel like it has a lot of sympathy towards Marilyn Monroe because what Marilyn Monroe went through is truly awful. Similar to Elvis Presley, like that movie, the movie Elvis just shows like sort of the abuse that he went through from Tom Parker. It's similar here which, where it shows the abuse she was going for, but but unlike Elvis, where it just feels like you feel bad for Elvis and you hate Parker for what he did to him, this movie just never feels like it shows any sympathy towards Marilyn Monroe. It almost felt like the movie was like, oh, she deserved it. And yeah, that's, that's how I could describe this movie. It's just very unsympathetic towards Marilyn Monroe and what she went for. I mean, what she went through. And let's talk about, yeah, the, the sexual assault scenes. I will admit, I kind of expected this movie to be more graphic. I don't know, maybe I was expecting this to be like almost on a pornography level. And maybe it was a bit more tame than I was expecting, even though there's some pretty graphic shit. Like, for example, there's a scene where you see an erect penis. When you look at the rape scenes, not only... Again, it lacks the sympathy towards Marilyn Monroe, but a lot of the hardcore shit that happens in this movie just feels like it was just there for shock value. That's it. You know when in those adult comedy shows, those really stupid ones where they try to be offensive, but rather than coming up with something clever, it just feels like it's there to get a reaction, like Brickleberry or Paradise PD? That's the same I could describe Blonde. A lot of the really extreme things that happen in this movie, they just feel like they're made for shock value. And I, 
I probably the reaction they wanted was the audience to feel uncomfortable, but I don't feel uncomfortable in the way that they wanted this that they wanted the the audience to feel. I just feel uncomfortable in the way that oh, why am I watching this shit? It's like for example, there are a lot of movies that will make you uncomfortable, like for example, Good Time. The movie has a scene where Robert Pattinson's character kisses a teenager and it makes you feel uncomfortable but it never goes to the point where you want to turn the movie off it's not the same with here every time you watch any of the rape scenes in the movie you want to turn the movie off because how off-putting it is and how like gross it is like there's a scene where with JFK yes they even take that rumor that Marilyn Monroe slept with JFK I don't know if it's true or not but a lot of the movie from a lot of this movie was invented shit so I wouldn't be surprised there's a scene where um Marilyn Monroe literally uh like uh uh, uh, uh JFK swanger I almost threw up I will be honest I almost threw up but because how disgusted it was plus I'm not someone who finds blowjobs all that all that hot but again sorry if I'm not being so like precise as to what I hated about these scenes it's just that the fact that they just feel exploitative and just feel like they were just there for shock value it's what really like really turned me off from this movie it's just that everything just feels like it's made for shock value and it lacks sympathy towards what Marilyn Monroe came went through because this like I said this movie never feels like it like it sympathizes with her it almost felt like oh she just she she deserved that and that's not what I wanted about this movie and also when the movie is not trying to gross you out, the movie is all, is trying to bore you out of your mind because when I wasn't like turned off by the whole disgusting rape scenes, I was fucking bored watching this movie. Seriously, I re like this movie is three hours. Like, I don't mind a lot of three hour movies like Watchmen or The Snyder Cut. Those movies are three hours, but it never felt like a drag. This movie, you literally feel that this is three hours long because how boring it is, which kind of lets you, kind of makes you think that the rape scenes and the shock value of this movie was all Andrew Dominic was wanted to go for, because if it wasn't, if it wasn't for the the NC-17 rating, I feel no one would give a shit about this movie, and here's the thing, I know this is, a, this is not a biopic, so a lot of this, a lot of the things that happen in this movie are invented, which again, I, I'm not that familiar with Marilyn Monroe, I know that she didn't have a pretty life, so I don't know if maybe she dated Charlie Chaplin's son, even though I, I can pretty much say it's bullshit, or if she had an affair with JFK, who knows. But, I don't know, this, this just feels like, this just feels like one of those pretentious art house movies that it's just there to win an Oscar or try to get nominated for an Oscar, which, yeah, at least something like Belfast from last year or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, they never felt like pretentious vanity projects. Blonde has Vanity Project written all over it because when I was watching it, I was like, this is not someone's passion project. This is someone's vanity project. And yeah, I'm sorry if I'm not being that detailed as to why I hate this movie. It's just that it's gross, but at the same time boring. And this movie, if it wasn't for Ana de Armas' performance, I would say this is one of the worst pieces of shit I would I've ever seen. But I don't know. This this that's that's what this movie made to 
did to me, it just left me speechless. So, here's my final verdict for Blind. Don't see this movie. Like, I know some, some people will see it, will see this movie as this brilliant Oscar-worthy movie, but I know most people that I know see this movie as an exploitative vanity project, and that's what this movie is. Yes, Ana de Armas is great as Marilyn Monroe, and, and if this performance was in a better movie, I would have loved it. Like, similar to how Austin Butler was so good in Elvis that I really loved Elvis, even though, like, I haven't reviewed it. I definitely need to review Elvis. I feel like, like I said, if Ana de Armas' performance was in a better movie, I would have loved it, but this movie is just an exploitative vanity project that lacks any sympathy towards Marilyn Monroe and what she went for. I mean, what she went through. So, I'm just gonna say this. I'm gonna give Blonde a 1 out of 10. You know, I was considered, I was considering maybe a 2 or a 3 out of 10 because of, you know, Anna de Armas' performance, but I just can't because how off-putting and how disgusting this movie was. And the fact that that the shock value was all this movie was going for, it just pisses me off. And yeah, uh, I feel Marilyn Monroe deserved better. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Blonde. Let me know down in the comments. Did you like this movie? Did you hate it, this movie? Or here's a question. What is your favorite biopic? Um, let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this, please drop a like and subscribe. Make sure you follow me on my social media. The links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day. Can it out?